and all of a sudden this thing's going up and I'm going off, throwing the chainsaw one way, landing on my back on the other. And uh, it was pretty crazy, but I managed to pull it all off. But in the course of it, I did not glue it in belief because this was raw timber out of the jungle. I had to bring it home to Central Oregon where I put it into a kiln. And then I kiln dried it for two and a half months, shrunk it right down. Part of the process was I had to figure out how far it would shrink. You know, that wasn't an easy thing. How far does 10 foot of mahogany logs, 24 inches thick, shrink when you put it into a kiln so that it will fit into the jam of the church that is planning on it being so big, you know? So anyway, in the end, I used, uh, after it was all done and set and the, and the thing was kiln dried and whatnot and I carved it off, uh, I used, you know, plastic resin glue, the old style stuff because of the color. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't allow for white glue, it would show up, so the color of the, the glue in the end was the significant decision on that, so it was plastic resin glue I used. It was the perfect color for mahogany. I couldn't have asked for a better, better glue. I hope it holds together. What type <laughs> of finish? What's that? What type of finish? What type of finish? Yeah. I'm a real fan of oil finishes, but oil finishes are a pain in the ass, as we well know. And uh, so I started with oil finish, um, teak oil finish, per se, that penetrates in. I used to be a Watco man, but I've gotten into teak oil. But in the end, an oil finish is a nightmare, and with this scale that I was dealing with, and in truth, all my work in the end, I use uh, tongue oil. Tongue oil finish, there's a product called Waterlocks. If you've ever, you know Waterlocks? Mm -hmm. It's a, a gym floor finish. It's the greatest finish in the world. That's what this is. It just makes the wood glow. It's, a, it's an oil finish, but yet it sets up a little bit on the surface. Gives you that dust-free uh, look, and it's, it, you can put it on questionable wood. Is it different than a Scandinavian tongue oil, or is it pretty much the same thing? Uh, it, it, <coughs> or is it better? I think it's the best product I've ever come up with. It's water locks. They say it's unchanged formula since 1916. I'm going with that. You know, it's old style. You know, it's it's the it's the finish that our grandfathers always talked what's about. The, what's the resin finishes with tongue oil added. Yeah. And it's a great finish. What's the? Point? We got uh, 38 people, 39 people from around the world have been watching you. We got one question for someone that lives out in your area. He's wondering if people can visit your studio. Well, sure. All my studio is always visible. All right, Tom. You can go down there and say hi. All right. Thank you. <laughs> modern marble. I'll be there. <laughs> I mean, am I bored you here or what? Uh, uh, I did notice the studying and looking at your over quite a bit. In my own opinion, it seems like with uh, dragons in your horse altars, they seem to have a, a huge amount of life in them. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm wondering if, it, I'm a dragon fan, so I'm wondering if I'm picking up more energy because of that. But I'm not a big horse fan, and I'm still getting the same amount of energy. Uh -huh. Now, are those two of your main favorite pieces? Is that why they feel like that? Not, you know, not at all. They're really not my favorite pieces. <laughs> But it's just like every kid, you know, every kid is your favorite kid. I mean, I really, I love every one of the pieces I do. I always try to stand up for everything I'm doing when I'm doing it. But back to what I said earlier, I am carving energy. So everything I do has that energy of life in it. it if it doesn't have it, I'm not interested in it. So the dragons have, well, the dragon, look at that. Those necks on those dragons is all about flow of line, and that's what conveys energy, movement, movement, energy, flow of line. My horse is the rhythm of the back line, tying to the next horse's rhythm, to the next, to the next, to the next. You know, it just impacts that over and over and over. Anytime you can repeat a line, change the line and repeat the line, you are creating an energy flow out of that piece, you know. One line creates a melody. Five of those lines is a symphony, you know. If you want the symphony, 
impact over and over and over till the point is you, the viewer gets it. You like my horses because partly there's lots of them moving. You know, there's just energy of movement. Yeah, you feel the flow of it. it yeah. You feel like you're the same spirit, you know? And, and, and it's a piece, like you said, when you see it, you don't just see a sculpture. No. You see the energy in it. You know, you get to feel that. Yeah. And with me, it's with your dragons and your horses. Yeah, well, that's And I was just that's... wondering if it was me or... You yeah, know, many people feel. I mean, a lot of people love my my. We're working on. Let us send you more things. Sign it. So three, more images out of one. So one goes to four. It's got to be heard. Go full screen. And I think what we can do with this is create uh, something like an ode from Mother Earth to Father Sky, and in the sense of ode. Created, the music comes to mind. The first figure here, the most dramatic of all three. I'm ad right libbing this too. Right here, <laughs> lifting the arms up to get the thinness of the shoulders in line. So this is a fully extended figure with arms up, head, arms, body twist. Come down with the hips right here, and then all the way down with the legs.
to the second piece, I got some twists, some movement in it, and so that's the evolution of my artistic idea. She's the youngest of the muses. She represents adolescence and just beginning to flower as a you know, female. We had the four muses. Uh, that was the we <coughs> four laws. Yet when we finished the piece and, and had the, the piece of design, suddenly there was this concept of the root going into the earth, an emergent figure, hand-hued, rough-hued, not finished, coming up, pulling herself into life and into the suggestion <coughs> of the uplift. So this is the primal energy of earth evolving into our muses and going to 